exactly what you said there is, you know, the one thing what we didn't want to do is uh, we didn't want to help these models train themselves. Uh, and that's the risk with using some of these open source tools like ChatGPT or Anthropic or Gemini is everything you're putting in there is theirs. Uh, and so what we've made sure to do is that all of our data stays within ourselves and within our customers. So if you're using our tool, nothing's getting fed back publicly to these models. So what we had to do is we had to build a training model on top of it that, to your point, uh, you know, if you wanted to use ChatGPT the same way you're using us, you'd have to basically train it who you are, what you do, and then find all of the contracts in the world and train it on, like, I want it to be in this legal language. And so that's what we did, kind of this in between the LLMs and our user interface is us taking all of the contract databases we could find, so things like Edgar and Pacer and other global ones, and uh, built it saying, you know, not only do I want you to answer this question, I want you to answer this question based on me being Thomas, a professional, profession, uh, a professional legal professional, and with all of the context of these legal agreements in your context window, so that when you respond to me, if I'm working on a contract that is based in North America, I want it to be responding in legal language appropriate to that and to this contract type. But then maybe tomorrow I'm working on a UK contract or an Australian contract in plain language. Our tool then recognizes that that is what you have open and will give you suggestions and review red lines in plain language because we've trained it on the contracts from those regions of the world as well. So we're also taking those uh, jurisdictional information into account, not only for the language, but also the laws. Uh, the other day I was dealing with a GDPR contract and it recognized that the contract was based in the UK, which is no longer part of EMEA. So therefore it had a different, uh, sorry, not, no longer part of the EU. So it had different language that it suggested saying, actually, this language is only appropriate if you're using a company inside the EU. This company is based in London, therefore it needs to have this additional SEC. And so that's why you're seeing that difference between using open source models and using Spellbook is we've basically prompt engineered a middle layer between your interface and the language models so that when you get the responses, it's coming back with appropriate language for the contract you're working on, the jurisdiction you're in, and what you're trying to do.